Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Gospel of John, glory to God, chapter 19. Let's look at verses 28 through 34. I think that's where we're going to be. We'll stop at 34 or 30. No, we're going to go a little pa past that. We're going to go down to 37. 28 through, verses 28 through 37 of the 19th chapter of uh, the Gospel of John. Amen. Uh, and may we read together. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe, for these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken, and again, again another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Hallelujah. Uh, what a poignant and powerful and um, uh, precious picture of uh, these waning moments of the crucifixion and the death of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, from this passage, we want to talk just a little bit, teach just a little bit from the subject, why we do the things we do. Why we do the things we do. Amen? Uh, there, are, there are things in, uh, of, of common practice in our churches. And many times we don't know the, the, the why of it. We just do it because we're told that that's what we should do. And being obedient is not bad. I think, though, it would help us to grow and develop and appreciate our faith more when we understand why we do the things we do. So that, that we don't do them just because they said do it. But we do it because there's a scriptural foundation that points us in that direction. Amen? Does that make sense? Why we do the things we do. Why we do the things we do. Now, in... Uh, and, 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 I'm not going to get into talking about sacraments because there are uh, 
um, Christian religions that observe sacraments. Amen? And I believe there are seven of those. Amen. Um, uh, and generally speaking, a sacrament is seen as a means of grace from God. Amen? It, it, it is believed that to bring God's grace um, to us, the sac these sacraments need to be observed. Amen? We do not practice sacraments. We practice ordin ordinances. Amen? And there are two of them. Amen. Holy Communion and Baptism. Those are the two ordinances of our church. Now I know when we go through new member or new convert orientation, we probably get some of this, but we just kind of nod so the person can go on to the next page. <laughs> but the truth is, we really need to know why we do the things we do. There are two ordinances, Holy Communion and Baptism. Amen? Well, a reasonable question might be, well, what is an ordinance? What do you mean when you say ordinance? Amen? An ordinance is a practice that demonstrates the participant's faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. You need to find your own button and push it. Some of y'all ain't on. Amen? An ordinance is what? It is a practice that demonstrates the participant's faith. Now, please bear with me because I'm really primary and rudimentary. I ain't really intelligent. So I need y'all to just bear with me. And let's, let's, re let's say that together. An ordinance is what? A practice that demonstrates the participant's faith. Amen. Let's say that again. An ordinance is a practice that demonstrates the participant's faith. Amen. An ordinance is visual. There are no invisible ordinances. It, it is a practice. It, it, it is a demonstration. It's something we do. Amen. Or, uh, the ordinance is associated with tangible elements. Tangible elements. Amen. Amen. So when we at communion time take this cup, there's a tangible element in there. Two of them. But that, that, that liquid part of it is the tangible element. And when we consume it, we demonstrate that we have faith in the shed blood of Jesus at Calvary. Right? So I ain't just drinking the cup just to drink the cup. But I'm drinking the cup to demonstrate that I believe exactly what the word says that the blood of Jesus accomplished at Calvary. It, does that make, that make sense? So we can't just do it, but we need to know why we do the things we do. Similarly, the, 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 the little wafer of bread represents his body. It's physical. It's visual. Amen. 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 When we were, uh, the, the Lord had us planning for this building. One of the things we asked the Lord, we said to the Lord was, we desired to always have the baptism pool ready. So that nobody would have to come today and wait till next month to get baptized. <laughs> Amen. And it's only in the case of children whose parents are not present because we believe that parents need to be on board with that kind of thing. Amen. But otherwise, the water ready. Amen. Amen. We, we, amen. We, we say amen like, like the eunuch said to Philip. There goes the water. What hinders us? 
Amen. The water of baptism is a visible, tangible element. And when people go into the water of baptism, we are doing it in obedience to the scriptures, but we are demonstrating that we believe through Jesus' teaching that the water of baptism is our demonstration of the washing away of the old man, the old woman, the old boy, the old girl, and the coming forth into the newness of life. That makes sense. And so, uh, in this day, when there are, are, are churches who really don't, don't uh, uh, in, in, uh, encourage or put much emphasis on ordinances, amen, you, you can join a church and be there for decades and never get baptized. You can be there for decades and never take communion. But that's not what the word of God says. Jesus said of communion, this do in remembrance of me until I come again. Do it and do it and do it and do it and do it until I come again. of God says once we can repent, repent and be baptized every one of you for the remission of sins. Amen. That water ain't going to save you. No, that, that water ain't going to save you no more than your wedding band going to make you be loyal. It doesn't make you loyal. It indicates that you're loyal. It's a tangible indication. Amen. Are we communicating? Now, of course, you know, people will question things. So they will question, yeah, well, you, you ain't changed. You just you went down a dry center and you come up a wet center. Amen. All, you know, people say all kinds of stuff. Amen. Amen. But I'm saying what the Bible says. Amen. This is the Christian's guide for all matters of life. Amen. Amen. And, and, and the ordinance is purposed. It is intended to be a visual aid that indicates that we understand what Jesus accomplished at Calvary. We understand what he did for our salvation. Amen. In this John account of Jesus' crucifixion, we get the biblical foundation for Holy Communion and for baptism. Amen. I don't see the baptism. I see the idea. Yeah, 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 it's right there. It's right there. Amen. When I was younger, when I was a child, not younger, cause, <laughs> but a child, I misunderstood. Either I misunderstood what people were saying or they just weren't saying it correctly. Because for, for many years as a child, I thought people said that the blood, like water, ran down. That's what, that what I thought I heard them say. The blood ran down like water. But that's not what the word says. The word says the blood and water. Are we communicating? It was like in his last moment. Just before he said, it is finished, he said, I'm going to demonstrate to you what I need you to demonstrate back to me. So to fulfill the scriptures, they broke the legs of criminals. 
when it was getting too late in the day and was almost the Sabbath, because when you were on the cross, your feet were on a little pedestal and you could, you could, you could push yourself up and breathe a little bit more. But when they broke your legs, you couldn't do that anymore, so you died more quickly. That's why they broke their... But you remember just a few, a few verses earlier when Jesus said, I thirst, and they gave him water, and Jesus realized that everything was accomplished, and Jesus, and the Bible says, uh, he said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. Amen. Amen. And so when the... the, the the soldiers came around to, to hurry their, their deaths up. When they got to Jesus, his body was already dead. Amen. And, and so a soldier, it seems to me that he was just being cruel because it was obvious that Jesus was already dead. So why you got to pull out your sword if the man is already dead? Well, saints, I'm just here to tell you that God will use somebody doing a mean thing to get his point accomplished. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't be upset. I know sometimes we get upset when people do mean things and out of the way things, but sometimes God got to use somebody to do something mean so that he can show his glory in a situation. Sometimes they got to mistreat you. They got to do something wrong. They got to say something wrong. But don't worry about it because through that mean gesture, the glory of God is demonstrated. I'll be communicating it and I'm about out of here. Woo! So this mean guy, he was mean. It doesn't change his nature. He was mean. He just didn't realize God was using his meanness. This mean guy drew his sword and pierced him in the side. And the Bible says when he pierced him in the side, blood. do we do the things we do? Because the last demonstration Jesus did for us was to show us the two essential elements that need to be kept alive in the practice of our faith. The blood! The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Don't let anybody dumb you down regarding the blood. water do not become convinced that we don't need the water of baptism as our visual demonstration that we believe when Jesus said it was finished it was finished are oh, we communicating so in this one these few little verses when we get to the point of them piercing him in the blood and water, that's, that's his visual to us. Are we communicating? I'm not why we do the things we do now. So we ain't taking communion just because it's the first Sunday. We're taking communion because Jesus gave us a dim, a visual, dim, visual demonstration of how we are supposed to demonstrate our faith back to him. When somebody confesses and receives Christ, in the water they go. It is the visual demonstration that when Jesus said it's finished, here are the two essential things you need to practice the Christian faith. The blood and the water. Those are two essential things we need to practice the Christian faith. Are we communicating? Why we do the things we do. I think it's good for all of us to know I'm done. I think
think it's good for children to know as you grow up that it's not just an empty practice. It is a Bible-based, amen. It's like Jesus, Jesus showed us a picture and we're just reflecting back to him. Does that make sense? He, he, he demonstrated through the shedding of the blood and the water. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 lest, lest somebody s s try to give me some explanation for why those two elements came out and telling me about the, the clear fluid in the sack coming out along with the iron. That doesn't do my faith. You see. My faith says what the word says. And the word said two elements. Not blood and a bloody clear fluid. But the, 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 the word says blood and water. And so we stand where the word stands. That's why we take communion. Um, the, uh, Paul advises the people at Corinth and we advise ourselves to not take it lightly. Not take it unadvisedly. Not just do it just to do it. But do it because it is an expression. It is. It is. It is reflecting back to God that we understand what his blood did. Not only do we understand, but we are evidence of what his blood did. We're going into the water of baptism. That's why baptism is, is serious. It, is, it shouldn't be scary, but it should be solemn and it should be serious. Because people are going down one way and they're coming up another way. Glory to God. And we have the blessed opportunity to teach them. Now you got to live this holy life. And here's what you got to do. Here's what you got to put off. And here's what you got to You see, now getting converted doesn't take but a second. But getting sanctified takes a minute. Amen. Because you got to learn how to live holy. No saved person knew how to live holy the minute they got saved. They might have known how to put the right kind of lift a dress on and all that kind of stuff. But they didn't know how to live holy. No, we didn't. Hallelujah. Why we do the things we do. Thank God for his word. Hallelujah. So all there are, there are countless songs of the church that reflect our belief. Um, the one that's being played now is one of the best, you know, uh, the blood that Jesus shed for me will never lose his power. Uh, another powerful song that reflects our faith in the finished work of Christ. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Amen. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Alas, I see. And did my Savior bleed. And did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross. At the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. All of them are visual indicators that we understand and appreciate. What happened when Jesus' body was pierced and when he gave us the final demonstration of the two essential elements we need to keep alive in our practice of the Christian faith. Glory to God. 
It'll never lose its power. Yeah. Now, I pray that this teaching helps us to be shored up, to be firm, more firm in our commitment to the Lord and in our commitment to performing those visual demonstrations which indicate to the Lord that we do have faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. I pray today that somebody's heart has heard the Lord saying, I did all this for you. I came to die. I came to shed my blood for you. I came to give my life for you. I loved you. God loves you so much that, that God came in the form of his son, Christ Jesus. For the expressed purpose of reconciling the world to him through his death at Calvary. Of creating a bridge, if you will, that would allow a wayward mankind to get back to a holy God. If your spiritual consciousness has been pricked, then I invite you to come give your heart to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Glory to God. If you are a backslider, if you just fell away from practicing Christianity and you feel the Lord calling you back home today, calling you back home today, if you feel the Lord calling you back home today, then please come. Please come. God says I'm married to the backslider. Glory to God. He rejoices just like that father did in, in the gospel of Luke. When he saw his son coming back, oh, he said, oh yeah, we're going to have a feast tonight. Glory to God. If you're a backslider, come on back. If you need strengthening in the Lord, now is the time. Glory to God. If you need a shelter or a covering, let us know. Amen. A shelter or a covering, glory to God. Amen. Uh, for a spiritual reason, a shelter or a covering. Amen. Uh, uh, amen. I, 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 okay, I'm a, I'm a, I done lost some points already, so I'm going to lose a few more. I don't believe in people prostituting the church and joining the church so they can join something else. If that something else had its own merits, then you wouldn't need to use the church to get in that, into that. But I'm telling you, the day will come and God going to shake the tree. He's going to shake the tree now. And none but the righteous going to make it. None but the righteous. Glory to God. Thank you for coming, son. Amen. Thank you for, thank God for showing you the need to come and for you responding to that. Amen. Amen. Whatever the situation and whatever you bring to the foot of the cross, that's between you and the Lord. Amen. I know heaven is rejoicing because you made a move. Amen. Heaven is rejoicing because you made a move. Glory to God. At home. Amen. Wherever you may be at work, amen, in the hospital, in some place of confinement, I don't care where you are on this globe, amen. What the gospel of John says that God's created everything, set all of creation into motion, put his, his greatest creation on one speck in creation called earth. In a perfect setting, they messed up. And then he wanted so badly to rescue his creation that he sent himself in the person of Jesus Christ so that through his shed blood we might be reconciled. Why we do the things we do. So we're going to pray. Ministers will be at that call-in number for 10 minutes or so after worship. 
Uh, if there's anybody who's made a decision, a decision for Christ now, a decision for Christ, that to be a God-led decision, a God-led decision. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Yeah, gives me strength. From day to day. Thank you, Lord. You will never. Let's pray. Alas, and did my Savior bleed? Hallelujah, Jesus. And did my sovereign? Was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Hallelujah. Amazing pity. Grace. To love beyond degree. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful. For some of us, it is new information. For others of us, it is a reminder. But for all of us, it was necessary. Thank you, Lord. No matter how long we've been saved, no matter how long we've been in the church, we need reminders that help us to, uh, to uh, put the appropriate value on the things we do. Thank you, Lord, for today's reminder. Thank you that it wasn't just a vain exercise. It's, it's not just another story of the death of some religious political figure. But it was the fulfillment of Scripture that this baby would be born of a virgin and would come to earth for the express purpose of shedding his blood for wayward mankind. Thank you, Lord. Lord, may we ever be true to your word. May we ever keep in practice those things that uh, you indicate and require and direct us to do. In your word. Lord, I pray right now for the unsaved. I pray, Lord, for those who are careless and cavalier and think that time will always be on their side. I pray for the unconcerned, the unconvicted, and the unconverted. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that soul that seems most hopeless. I pray for that soul that's nearest hell right now. I pray that they would hear you calling their name. 
And I pray that they will see that, that you loved them so much that you sent your son and your son gave his life. That they might have life. Have it more abundantly. I pray for the backslider. I pray for those who uh, have to come before you today and say, Lord, forgive me for this, that, or the other. Forgive me. For whatever was said or done, forgive me. For whatever I failed to say or do, forgive me. Thank you for restoration today. I pray for the strengthening of the saints. I pray that we will lift high your blood-stained banner and keep it lifted high until our Savior comes. This is our prayer today in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Ooh, ooh, oh, the blood of Jesus. It must not suffer long. Singing, oh. The blood of Jesus singing all oh, of Jesus. I'm singing all oh, of Saints in Mass. There is power, there's power, there's wonders working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, there's wonders working power in the bread. Thank God for that power, power, wonders working in the blood of the Lamb. Thank God for power, in the bread. Also, Paul, in writing to the church at Corinth, um, said, I'm, I'm teaching you what I've been taught. Amen. 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 That, that's what he was saying when he used the words. He said, For I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ that which also I give unto you. And in other words, what I got, I'm passing on. That on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. We don't have the benefit of a, a loaf as it used to be when I was growing up. Everybody took a pinch off the same loaf, uh, which was a dramatic kind of indication that because once you pinch a piece off a loaf, you can't put it back. That loaf is not the same. But even with this small wafer of bread, consider this. There's no way we can consume this small wafer of bread and it enter our stomach the way it looks in our hand. It's going to be, you got to chew it up. You got to swallow it down. It's going to change. It's going to be broken. Just remember this part of this visual practice that demonstrates that we believe what the word of God says.
word of God says that after supper, they, after uh, the bread, he took the cup. And he told them this cup is a new testament, a new agreement, a new covenant in my blood. So every time we drink the cup, we got to remember that our salvation couldn't be sealed without the shedding of blood. Really important. And then when he goes on to say, you know, let a man to examine himself and so on, let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Um, that involves the matter of uh, are there things for which I need to ask forgiveness, or that sort of thing. Uh, the most critical thing is, do I understand why I'm eating this bread and drinking this cup? And do I put the appropriate value on this practice? And am I doing it just because it signifies I'm a member of the club? If that's the case, I may as well not do it. But I'm doing it because I know from the time Jesus in that garden said, I wish this cup would pass, I knew he was dealing with the reality of my sin. It's a very personal kind of understanding. All Christians are encouraged and welcome to uh, celebrate Holy Communion with us. If you desire Holy Communion, is there anyone who needs to be served the bread and cup? May we pray. Lord, we thank you for this privilege of remembering the price that was paid uh, for our salvation, Lord, for our abundant life. Oh, God, you have been so good to us. Uh, we uh, sometimes get so caught up in the hustle and bustle of life that we don't take time to remember where all our blessings come from, Lord, and the blessing of salvation, the, the blessing of new life, uh, the blessing of being born again, the blessing of forgiveness of sins, the blessing of being led by the Holy Spirit. But today, Lord, we, we take the time to say we do recognize these things and we do appreciate them. And according to your instructions, the instructions of our Lord who says this do, said this do in remembrance of me. We come with these elements. Lord, we ask you to bless the cup, bless the bread. Right now, God, may any natural use of it be set aside. And may we, as we consume it, consume it purely for its spiritual value. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, may we then practice this ordinance of Holy Communion by eating the bread representing our Lord's body. of God causes us to know that without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins and we believe as the word of God teaches us that through the shedding of the blood of Jesus the sin debt was paid for all humanity for all time and by faith we connect with what Jesus did and uh, we believe in the efficacy the power the shed blood of Jesus. May we drink the cup representing our Lord's blood.
Spirit of God causes us to know that after what that day was was a supper, they sang a hymn and they went out into the Mount of Olives. Of course, um, unless there's a jet waiting outside, I don't guess we'll get to the Mount of Olives today. But we're going out into a world full of sin and uh, walk out in the renewed power that's been made available to us just by learning again why we do the things we do. Amen.